Hello, everyone, and welcome to Life Questions. I'm Bill Harris, your host. This program focuses on the many questions you, our viewers, have about life and the solutions provided by the Bible, the Word of God. Many of the questions we address come from you, our faithful viewers, to which we're very grateful. We have shared uh, your questions with a panel of invited guests, local ministers, who will provide answers from a biblical perspective. And they are with us right now, and I want to introduce you to them. First up we have is Pastor Charlene Williams of the One Church of Lima, Ohio, followed up by Pastor John Berger of Transform Church, also from Lima. Next, we have Pastor Russ Thomas of The Gathering Place and New Creation Lutheran. Those are two congregations under one roof in Elida, Ohio. Rounding off our panel is Pastor Robin Zaruba of the Lima Baptist Temple. He is the worship pastor there. We're happy to have you all with us. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you very much. All right, I want to begin with a question that we, can, that we got in from a viewer here uh, that says, it seems like we have a country that has walked away from the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. This infuriates me, and I would like to know your thoughts on this, lady and gentlemen. What are your thoughts on this, about the Constitution, Bill of Rights, and the fact that this person feels that uh, it's being violated to the hilt? How do we, how do we address that as Christians? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I, I, uh, I see almost our, our, our country uh, walking away from its foundation um, as man does with the Word of God. Um, so many times um, we get on the slippery slope of culturalism. So, so take, for instance, um, um, any topic um, from, uh, you know, homosexuality, for instance, um, you know, when the Bible was written, I have people that will defend that by saying, well, back then, you know, it was a stricter culture. Um, women pastors, the same thing. The, the, the women were not uneducated back in Jesus's day. So they're saying now in our culture now, uh, we, uh, we're more accepting of those things. So the truth of God's word starts to fade in terms of culturalism. And that's a slippery slope that we get on um, that, that we, may, we may never stop sliding until it isn't long and the truth of God's word is no longer the truth that we're living. So our, our, our Constitution and Bill of Rights is the same, same way. Um, I've, I've got Joshua 24, 15 written down here and it reads, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day then whom you will serve, whether the gods of your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So the Bill of Rights in the Constitution is important um, when it comes to the morals of God's Word. And we need to stand on the Bill of Rights and Constitution when they do align with, the, with God's mm -hmm. Word. And I believe the Word says that we are to submit to our governing authority, mm -hmm. and I will as long as my governing authority is submitting to God. Mm -hmm. That's just like the spiritual leader of the home. A woman will submit to a man who is submitting to God. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't want to be the manager. I've seen the boss's job. I don't want it, right? <laughs> but, but I'm the spiritual leader of my home, and I find that my wife, we, it's a conversation we never have to have. It happens naturally if the man is submitting to God the family yeah. wife and children will submit to him spiritually yeah. Yeah. yes Very good. I had served in the military many years ago and I was grateful for that privilege to serve our country but then a few years later I was born again into a new kingdom mm -hmm. and I think it's important to remember that all the, the kingdoms of man are eventually going to crumble but one will remain, and it was like we were talking offset. That kingdom is one where righteousness will dwell uh, therein, and Jesus will be the king of that kingdom. Mm -hmm. And all of the things that we're dealing with today, the things that we've talked about uh, even previously, uh, those things will be gone, and his righteous rule will uh, then commence at the beginning of, of that time. And so we have much to look forward to. And so I, while we're concerned about the things that are taking place today, we have an eternal promise to look forward to. Mm -hmm. America needs Jesus, but Jesus does not need America. Mm -hmm. It's a dark world and it's getting darker and it's going to get really dark before it's all over with. Uh, so when it comes to things like these, I believe that the Bible obviously calls us to be uh, good citizens. 
you know, to do our best to live peaceably among everyone. Uh, but uh, as you said, our ultimate allegiance is to Jesus. So I do everything I should do to live peaceably and be a good citizen. But I try not to be troubled, you know, by what I would consider temporal circumstances. I think that we've, we've had a little bit of, of a, a graceful time, if that's the right word, in the United States, you know, to, to have a constitution and a bill of rights, but all that's gonna be swept away. So when people come to me with concerns like this, I'm like, Let's get our eyes. I mean, you already said it all. I don't need to repeat it. <laughs> well, know? we are to be salt and light while we're here, but our citizenship ultimately is in heaven, mm -hmm. and we're to do his business until he returns to set up his kingdom. Right. We're not to be a, 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 an ascetic or a monk to just be totally right. distant from society, to be involved in it, but to remember what's important, I think. Oh, yeah. and, and while, he's, while the viewer is talking about slipping away from the Constitution, we're also slipping away from the uh, the principles of the Bible that this country was founded on. Would sure. you say? Yeah. Um, yes, I would agree with you totally. I think I think for our viewer and for so many of us, I think it might be a great time in our lives, a great time in our nation, for us to rethink our priorities. Yeah. Really yeah. take time to rethink what we are, because the person used the word infuriates. That's a very strong word. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's a lot of emotion. Uh, That's no. a lot of, uh, that came from inside. Yes. Um, I wonder if that individual or individuals such as those shift your priority into, what about those that right now have no electricity, that are living out in the streets? Shouldn't that infuriate us? That these are folks that need our attention mm -hmm. or the children that are being abused right now because of the closed environment with COVID, where mm -hmm. they're locked up in homes. Mm -hmm. These are things that are happening every day. Yes. That's where I would say, let us, let us really, let's really recalibrate our focus, mm -hmm. our perspective. Mm -hmm. um, instead of getting emotional about this, even though it's great, it is important, but I think there's so much more weightier stuff that can really impact people's lives for eternity, impact our, our society, our community for the kingdom, homelessness and people that are hungry, people that are buying cursing oil from the, from the gas station to heat up their little homes and, and things like that. To me, that's where we want to focus a lot of our attention right now because of the, 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 the craziness that's happening around us right now. That would be my take. <laughs> Here's another question that came in from a viewer. I am the caretaker of my mother. She is not a believer and she is cruel to me. I keep praying for her heart to change and I am trying to show her God's love, but I am feeling very tired from it all. Can you encourage me? This, this woman's reaching out for help. Can you encourage me? I'm at my wit's end. What, 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 what should I do? Hmm. So what says? Our that? encouragement ultimately comes from Jesus. Jude chapter 20 talks about uh, building yourself up in, in, in the faith and praying in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I would encourage you to look to Jesus today. Uh, he is more than enough for you. And as you, as you pray to him, as you worship him, he will encourage you. He can meet your needs in ways that I don't think anything that we could say today could. Uh, that's my thought on that. I'm sure, I, I haven't been in this type of situation, but I can tell from the, the writer of the question that you know how difficult this is. Uh, but it just makes me think of later uh, when her loved one is gone, you know, both, both the, the difficult and the lovely moments are gonna meld together mm -hmm. uh, in memories. And uh, so if you can, yeah. you know, I would just encourage you, you know, just to hold on to, to that hope uh, that, that that's what you'll have. There are many who, uh, you know, my father died suddenly and, and I wish I had spent more time with him. And I, and I have some of that regret. And uh, so just to be able to, to have that opportunity to take care of your loved one, uh, I, you know, it's maybe a glass half empty, half full kind of thing. Like if you can just adjust your thinking 
Uh, and I don't mean to make light of your situation, but you know, if you just pray to God and ask Him to give you a different way of thinking about this, that one day what you're going to be left with is the memories uh, of that time. And uh, m maybe that's some encouragement that you can use. And what about maybe putting some things in place, just maybe just simple changes, um, maybe getting away yeah. from the situation. Every so often you're human um, and the situation can become overwhelming, especially in the face of what all of us are experiencing. Sure. Um, staying in that environment constantly, it can beat you down. Right. And so it might be a good thing to say, okay, this is how I'm going to plan my day. I'm going to give myself at least an hour or 30 minutes. Can I get somebody else, maybe to, a friend to come over and look at mom for a little bit while I get away? Or maybe I, I give myself to reading, mm -hmm. you know, in my quiet moments, just reading or maybe just listening to some beautiful music or inviting a friend over, whatever it is. But put some mechanisms in place, I would suggest to help you, the, the person that is experiencing it. Mm -hmm. And unless you walk those roads, you know, sometimes you really can't really empathize with That's what true. the emotions are like. I was exactly. a stay-at-home mom. I was a career person first. And then when my son came, I choose to stay home. And I would never have imagined that it would have been such a difficult thing. I would never have imagined us being in the house all day. It was no COVID. But just being in the house all day, <laughs> talking COVID. to a little, yeah. <laughs> a little child. Yeah. Oh. Even one day my husband came home and I started talking baby to him. <laughs> I didn't even realize it. That's good. But when you're in that mm. environment, it becomes overwhelming. Yeah. And sometimes you just have to step away. Just step away and just put mechanisms in place to say, if it's three things I'm going to do for my sanity and for my survival. Yeah. And that's what I would recommend. That's and, uh, very practical advice, very practical down-to-earth advice. Thank and, you. And, to, and to, to piggyback off of that, um, the, the questioner states that she, uh, she keeps praying for her heart to change. Um, so it's obvious she is a woman of faith, but she doesn't mention if she's connected to anyone corporately, a, a church corporately. And, and not so much that they would come in and care for her mother, but to encourage her, yes. um, that she would have people that would encourage her through that. I, I went through a, a two-year ordeal um, myself, uh, ended up losing my leg over. And that whole process, I had seven surgeries total, but it was a two-year process. And mm. people would stop by and check on me. But my wife was the caregiver. Not only was she taking care of me, but everything, we had horses and, and everything about our farm, she was taking care of that I normally would have done. And so I finally just started asking them, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here in a recliner healing. She's out her doing all these things. See if there's someone you could do to help her. You know, to do run an errand to the store, yeah. you know, uh, help them out. Like you said, Pastor, just um, help them out. But for this lady, I would recommend to her to get connected to a church yeah. that if maybe they can't aesthetically or physically help you, but they can encourage you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like you said, yeah. different things to do. There are some organizations um, that provide what's called respite care mm -hmm. to give that caretaker a break. Mm -hmm. And I know, for instance, area agencies on aging. Mm -hmm. uh, they do that. I'm, I'm board chairman of the Area Office on Aging up in Toledo, Ohio. And they provide this service where they will come in and actually relieve that caregiver mm -hmm. so that that caregiver can go out and, nice. and do whatever, just mm -hmm. some of the kind of things that you were talking mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. and then come back refreshed mm -hmm. and ready to go at it again. Mm -hmm. so you I, don't the, go ahead. I don't know if the, the, the person being cared for has d dementia or some... Uh, some sort of, of malady like that, but it's it's not okay for that person to be cruel. So if that person is lucid, absolutely, if I were in the woman's place, I would say, hey, mom, it's not okay for you to say that to me or be cruel to me. So just from a practical standpoint, you know, don't be a shrinking violet, you know, stand up for yourself, you know, you know, uh, appropriately and, and, and face those things and, and talk to the person because a lot of times in those situations people are just pushing things down you know until they're going to explode and so it's okay to say that this is not right please don't do that they may continue but you've at least had spoken your piece you know and said your mind. i was thinking um along the line too um when you are the sick there's so much emotions that is involved in that anger why am i here why am i lying down and 
you know, it just bring all of us, like you said, you were the sick one yeah. and your wife was taking care of you. And sometimes you get irritated. I, I remember being in a car accident and was down for about almost a year. And my husband was the caregiver. And it's after he told me, he said, you were so agitated all the time. And I, I don't even know why. With that emotions and everything just come up to the top. So just helping that individual to say, um, be patient with her, or, you know, if you will, because his mom, mom did take care of you. When, <laughs> and she had to exercise that same amount of patience with you when you were a little one. But like you said, it's not okay to be mean. Uh, so I agree with you. Maybe it might be good to say, mom, this is not, this is not good. You're not talking to me like this is not good, you know? Yeah. So maybe those are just options for them to walk through this passage yeah. with. Excellent. Listen, we're going to take a break. Be back in just a moment. And when we come back, I'd like to talk about a situation where there's a, an individual who left the church years ago. <clears throat> and now they have realized the error of their ways and they want to come back. How should the church respond to that? We'll deal with that in just a moment, right after this. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back. And uh, as promised, here is a uh, viewer question that came in. I spent many years away from God. About that. I want to return to church, but I am fearful of how people will judge me if I return. People know I haven't been living right, but I am really trying to change. How should versus how does the church respond to a person like that? My, my response would be, um, I don't know if it's the church's issue. Mm -hmm. I think it's the person's issue. Really? Yeah, because okay. I feel like the church will just embrace you. Yeah. I think it's a natural flow of the church to want to, to see a brother or a sister come back no matter how far they have gone. But I think we deal with our own stuff. Ah. We deal with what I call head trash. Head trash. And the Bible calls it condemnation. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The Bible says in Romans 8, 1, there is now therefore no condemnation. Uh -huh. And I believe the enemy used the platform of our minds to create a, a wrestling match. Mm -hmm. And it brings the church in with boxing gloves in your mind. Yeah. And it brings you in. And it's almost like you're fighting against the church. But really, that's not it. The church is going to love you. We're going to love you. I don't care how far you have gone. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you have done. Don't allow the devil mm -hmm. to condemn you Amen. and make you feel like you're not mm -hmm. worth it. No matter how, no, I don't care. You could be a murderer, a thief, uh, uh, whatever it is. Don't allow that wrestling match to be one in your mind that the church doesn't love you. The church loves you. The church, God's people, I believe there's still a group of people that loves the sinner, that loves people, because we all really, is only by the grace of God yes. that we have made it. So I will tell, tell that person, honey, just go to church. Mm -hmm. I would say just, just go to church and just experience the love of God. And if anybody in the church shuns you, mm. that person really needs a touch from the Father. Yeah really do because i i just believe the body of christ is to love god's people regardless of so i will say work with it on the mind um what it is romans one don't allow condemnation mm. to to win you you no god loves you and the people of god that's too don't allow that head trash. No, don't okay. worry with that head trash. Head trash. <laughs> very he good. is the God of the second chance and yes. the third yes. chance and the 800th yes. chance. And that's what's <laughs> yes. so amazing about yes. his mercy and his grace. Today is that day and to let today be that day for you because Jesus is waiting for you with open arms. And if that requires you to, I know they've mentioned about going back to church, maybe they're thinking of a specific church that they've attended in the past that they may feel that, that won't receive them. 
maybe they should find another Somewhere church, else, yeah. right, right, yeah. where they have yeah. the freedom yeah. to become who point. they are in the future in Christ, not who they were in the world. Some people tend to get hung up on legalism, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and legalism is not in the Bible. They just take scriptures to use it to beat people. Yeah, yeah. I, and and I, I, I watch words very closely and I, I was humored when I first read this that they said I spent many years away from God so I want to return to the church. I would first jokingly <laughs> right. ask them, shouldn't you return God, to church. God first? Maybe sure. that's why you're not living <laughs> yeah. right in your words there. But I, I would probably sit down with this person and read Luke chapter 15 because in it, um, it, the parables, Jesus gave the parables of the sheep, the coin and, and the son. Mm -hmm. You know, in each one of those, there was rejoicing yeah. when that lost returned. Yes. So I don't see any church shunning someone for coming back. Um, once again, I believe it's, it sets up on the writer there that they're uh, confused about what the love of God is and um, they need to experience that again and it will be, it will be transforming, life transforming. I, but I, I wonder if they're writing this because of a bad experience of the yeah. past or maybe something they have seen it's in the possible. past. We're all at the center of our own story, you know, and so the thought of going back somewhere that we haven't been in a long time mm -hmm. fills us with nervousness and we, we all, I think, naturally think everyone's going to notice that I've been gone and I'm back. All eyes are going to be on me. But everybody else that comes through those doors That's is right. thinking the same That's thing. Right. Even if they were there last Sunday, are they going to be looking at what I'm wearing? And right. Look, nobody's really going to notice. I don't know what's worse, if they would notice you or not really notice you. <laughs> but the point is, I think we'd all gr agree, is that you have to take that first step. You've got to put your big boy britches on and you gotta go that first Sunday, and then every time after that. I mean, it's gonna be uncomfortable, you know? We can't say it's going to be comfortable. It's gonna be uncomfortable, at least in your own head trash. Yes, it's, it's gonna be uncomfortable. You gotta do it, and then get past yeah. it, you know? It's God will mind. give you the grace to do it. This is a powerful thing. Amen. Mm -hmm. I remember going through a period in my life as a minister's wife, mm -hmm. where I felt that the congregation didn't like me. I don't know where it came from. Our people are the best people, I think, in Lima. I'm sorry, Pastor. <laughs> but I just feel like the people at One Church are the very best. And they love me, I know it. And I don't know where this head trash came from. And it was so powerful. It was so powerful. I gave it room to flourish. Mm. I gave it room to, to grow. And I had to come to a place where I'm like, and I was looking at people to, to try to see, is she really going to show that she loves me? Or is she going to... And I had to come to a place of, what's yeah. wrong with you? These people love you. What's and I had to deal with it up here. Now, the circumstance never changed. I changed. Yeah. My mindset changed. And sometimes that's what we have to do. The church is not condemning you. It's you who are condemning you. Mm -hmm. And you're feeling like, because of all that I've done, I'm not worthy to come back under the roof. But like you say, come to God. Mm -hmm. He's going to embrace you. As long as he embraces you, you're going to be all right. Yeah. You're going to be okay. And when you repent and come to Jesus, then begin to pray, Lord, show me, where do you want me to fellowship? Yes. Where do you want me to be? Where do you want to plant me? Uh -huh. Excellent. Very good advice from all of you. Thank you very much. Uh, here, here's one. Uh, a viewer says, uh, are we really made in the image of God? And what does that mean? Are we really made in the image of God? And what does that mean? When we read the biblical definition of heaven, heaven is God. I don't think we can characterize him in life form, but we as humans in our small mentality can't come up with anything but physical humanness. But I believe that we are made in the character. The image is more in line with the character of God. We're created to love and to help and to love God back. And, and, but, but because of the sin in the world that we're born into, you said it earlier, we're, we're, we're all going to hell without Christ. It's not that God wants to send us to hell. We chose without Christ, we can avoid hell. So we're created in the image of God by his character, I believe that means. And, and, and through Christ, we can regain that character from the sinfulness of the world and start acting more like the character of God, the image, be the image of God. That is the, the necessity of the transformation process because mm -hmm. Genesis 1, 26 and 27, I believe it is, says that we're made in his likeness, in his image, male and female. And then the fall happened shortly thereafter, Genesis 3, and then there's been this long process for centuries until the Messiah came, died on the cross, 
so that all who would receive him, there's the redemption again, John 3, 16, could then be born anew, born again, made a new creation, and then there's the lifelong process of being transformed into his image, conformed to his likeness, which one glorious day will be manifested in us and through us at his return. So uh, yes, we were created in his likeness and his image. The fall skewed that, but we have a glorious hope that one day we'll be made like him again. Amen. Now this one last question, and please forgive me for asking it so late because it's gonna need more time, but we only got two minutes. What does it mean to truly love your neighbor? It seems like we have different definitions of love. For example, I had uh, people say to me, love your neighbor and wear your mask. <laughs> But that feels like coercion to me. This isn't necessarily a mass discussion, the, the, the viewer writes, but a question about twisting the words or the use of love to provide a point or to get a person to do something specific. In other words, manipulation, right. I guess. I'd say there is no and or if to love. There is just love. It, it has no, uh, no manipulation to it. So you, you, you can't say, if you love me, then this or love me and this, you know? So, uh, I mean, Jesus showed us what it is to truly love, uh, to, to defer to another, uh, to, to help another, uh, to lay one's life down for another, but, but one can't be made to do that. That's not love. For me to give my money to the government is not charity or love they'll come after me with a gun if I don't, okay? If I, I give my money to a charity, to the church, then, then that's motivated by love. Hopefully, it's motivated by love. Philippians chapter two uh, talks about how Jesus made himself of no reputation so that he could go to the cross. It's, it's self-sacrificial. It's for the betterment, ultimately, of the other person. Wasn't thinking of himself or his own reputation at that point. Yeah. I think Luke 10 gave, um, such a beautiful narrative of what true love is. Uh, Jesus was the greatest storyteller. We know that. Oh, yeah. oh, and yeah. this question of um, love, loving your neighbor, is not, is not something new. It's an old question that was asked way before. And Jesus pointed them right to an illustration, a story. And he told a story of the Good Samaritan oh, yes. and the, um, was it a Jew, I think? I can't even remember. Well, the, uh -huh. Yeah. Anyway, Jesus told him, you know exactly who the person in this, in the three of them, the priest, the Levite, and the Samaritan, which one of them do you think really showed love? Mm -hmm. It was the one that took himself out of himself and showed the love of God to someone else that we may say is undeserving. Mm -hmm. And so it's living for others. That's what one of my presidents used to say. He used to say, live for others. And that's really what love is. All right. And on that note, we're going to have to end it for a lot of time. Thank you very much. Certainly have enjoyed this, this discussion, and I certainly hope we have helped somebody today. We'll be back again next week with another edition of I Question. So stay tuned. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful life. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com. <laughs>